So hello, my name is Andreas Penskover. Um, I'm a researcher at the IOTA Foundation and I'll be talking about uh, parasite chain detection in the IOTA 1.0 protocol. Um, so to give some context, uh, uh, IOTA is an open source permissionless uh, DLT um, which aims to become the backbone of uh, IOT. Um, so in order to facilitate this, um, we require to enable uh, secure data and value transfers, including microtransactions. Um, to enable microtransactions, um, it, we have to be, uh, well, or we, we uh, aim to be fearless. Um, so this uh, excludes to have minors. And um, so the security in this case is then actually uh, performed by the transaction issuers and uh, append the appendance and uh, integration of the transaction also happens through the transaction issuers. Um, I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, then the IOTA protocol is actually going through several stages at the moment. Uh, the version 1.0 uh, is the one that I will be focusing on in this talk in particular. Um, in this version, the network is secured through the proof of work that is performed by, um, by uh, um, appending the transactions. Um, and it requires that a majority of the transaction issuers are honest. Um, in addition to bootstrap, the protocol, uh, the Auto Foundation is also driving a, a, a node that is issuing milestones at regular intervals. Um, and transactions are only considered to be final after uh, after a milestone. In the version 1.5, which is the currently the one that is currently in progress, uh, there are several modifications and improvements to the protocol, such as like new tip selection mechanisms, uh, auto peering, UTXO, etc. Then, in parallel, uh, in order to get rid of this node, there is a, um, a, a core site upgrade which means that we uh, disable the coordinator and introduce like a new voting protocol, new rate congestion mechanisms, et cetera. Um, so in this talk, I will be focusing on the 1.0 protocol in order uh, because one of the attacks that can be performed on that is a, a parasite chain attack, which double spends funds. Um, uh, this has been like, the risk for this has been reduced in the 1.5 and 2.0 protocol. Uh, or in the 2.0, it's actually not possible anymore. But um, so what uh, this, the core element of this detection mechanism can be still also applied to like to measure the health of, of the tangle uh, uh, or the, the, the data structure of, of the IOTA. Um, and so like we can still uh, use this method as well for the later versions. Um, so where are we along this path? So the 1.0 protocol is basically uh, uh, concluded and it has been taken over by the work on the 1.5 on the Chrysalis uh, version. And in parallel, there's a test network running on the, on the Cordy side uh, project as well. Then, um, so what is the underlying data structure that is used in, 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 the, in the OTA? Um, so instead of like a blockchain, um, there is a, we employ a DAG and a directed acyclic graph. And uh, as said, the, the transaction issuers directly attach the transactions to this to this to this graph uh, by um, approving two former um, but non-approved transactions, uh, also called tips. And um, so the, the graph grows. Uh, then into the future by and uh, and certain and the tips um, obtains a certain number of approvers and this exponentially grows into the paths pass. Um, here is an animation of like how this looks on the mainnet currently. Um, so you have like these incoming transactions on the top and transactions that are further down do not get more approvers, but the weight that is put on top of by the tips is is uh, being increasingly pulled on top of them, and they get basically buried under the proof of work. Um, now, 
in in this uh, algorithm in this protocol we use uh, three different so there's there's possibility for like different tip selection algorithms because the nodes are free to choose their tip selection algorithm um, i will focus here on the uniform random tip selection and then two types of random walks um, the unbiased and the biased one um, the unbiased random uh, the uniform random tip selection is basically where a node just selects one of the unapproved uh, uh, transactions or tips uh, at random. Um, and in the unbiased random walk, um, the node starts a random walk for in the past of this tangle um, or this duck. And at each step, it chooses one of the children at random till it arrives at one of the tips and it selects that for approval. Um, now, these two mechanisms have a disadvantage, which is that uh, they do not penalize if um, a node issuer issues a transaction that just approves an old transaction. Um, this is bad because um, by if the node just approves old transactions, it does not actually add to the security of the ledger. So we want to penalize this behavior and we can do this by um, biasing this random walk such that like the walk walks more towards like transactions that have more proof of work on top of them. Um, uh, in order to do so, there's like a parameter alpha that is quite delicate to choose um, here, as shown here in this, in this uh, uh, probability transition. Um, so, uh, so it's quite important to choose this alpha value correct. If you choose it too small, you basically just end up with something similar to the to the uniform random tip selection. So you have like this lazy tip selection problem again, or you're vulnerable to attacks. If you choose it too high, you risk that you just choose the, high, uh, the transaction with high weight and you orphan transactions, which lowers the maximum throughput in the system because you have to reattach or promote transactions. Um, now, um, the biased random walk is computationally much more heavy. Um, this is um, because you have to perform algorithms to uh, count how much weight is built on top of a transaction, um, but it does prevent the lazy tip selection. In addition, there can be performed a double spend attack um, in, this, in this stack system. Um, on the, and this happens in the following way. So you have a, uh, an attacker places a transaction uh, to a merchant in, in, in the tangle and waits till the, the merchant accepts these funds. Um, in parallel, he mines uh, secretly like a, um, a chain in parallel that he only reveals once the spend has been accepted. And then he hopes that this parasite chain uh, tangle is then overtaking the main tangle and this would mean that all of these uh, transactions in the center here would be orphaned and this becomes the main tangle here. This can happen for all of those three tip selections. Um, in, the, you are in the uniform random one you just create many tips, in the unbiased random walk you just create many links to the past. So they're not very resilient to this type of attack uh, with the biased random walk the attacker has to actually outperform or almost outperform the main network temporarily in order to like overtake the um, overtake the main tangle, the honest part of the tangle. Um, so this is uh, also in this terms, like more secure. Um, nevertheless, um, you so the attacker could have a chance to like uh, perform this attack. And what we want to do is we want uh, to identify this parasite chain and, um, and we can um, then take countermeasures to prevent it from taking over the main tunnel. So how can we do this? It's basically this parasite chain has um, a very different structure to the main tangle. Um, in particular, if the attacker wants to have a very efficient parasite chain, he needs to create a lot of links to the main tangle. And as you can see here in this very simple parasite chain, each transaction here has only one approver. Now this is very different to the main tangle where you can actually have transactions that have a very high number of approvers. Um, and um, 
So what we can do is we can like create a metric that measures how likely it is that a transaction has a given number of approvers. Um, so here you have like three, three approvers, two, one, and it varies, whereas in the parasite chain it would not. So we can create a distance metric um, that measures the distance of like uh, how 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 distant this uh, this walk as we perform the walk is from like a walk that we would perform in the main tangle. Um, now the model is based on that uh, the transactions are, that are incoming are, are coming in randomly and are independent of each other. Uh, through a Poisson process, and you uh, derive then that there is a uh, the number of tips is proportional to the transaction rate, um, and we find then that for a given transaction, this this number of approvers is also Poisson distributed, where, uh, where like I give the term here with like it's like an integral form that depends on the uh, on the probability that uh, a certain transaction is being picked while it is a tip um, uh, from this number of approvers for a given transaction we can derive the probability distribution um, and as and we show here like on the right um, that for a large uh, range of transaction rates um, we we find that the simulation is actually agreeing very well with the model. So we can uh, perform this. So this was for the, uh, I might have not mentioned this, this is for the uniform random tip selection. So this is the random selection. This is strongly connected to the um, unbiased random walk, uh, but the situation is a bit more complicated here. So with the unbiased random walk, we have different exit probabilities. Uh, so they're not, uh, the normalized exit probability is not one anymore as it would be with the uniform random tip selection, but it varies. And what we can do is we can sort these exit probabilities by the least likely to most likely um, probability. And we derive then an exit probability um, distribution. Now in the, IOTA 1.0 protocol. Uh, the values are uh, such that uh, at the moment that the biased random walk is very similar to the unbiased random walk, so we can model these two similarly. Um, we then can use this exit probability and uh, use it to derive a probability distribution for the unbiased random walk. And as you can see here, it's like tightly connected to the uniform random tip selection. Um, it's like linear to it plus some integral term. And we can simplify this integral term <clears throat> if we consider a linear approach instead, uh, which still works very well in our, in our tests. And again, we can find that the probability distribution is, is very similar to what we expect from our simulations. We then plug this uh, probability distribution, uh, this metric of how on average the the number of approvers looks like uh, into a random walk that we perform. So basically uh, we perform like run, a random walk through the tangle to select a tip. And as we go along it, we, we remember and count how many approvers we have accounted at each given transaction. And from this, we derive a probability, a distribution of like, um, or histogram of like how many, how many transactions you found. And you compare this distribution that you found with the reference distribution that is given through this model. Uh, this gives you then a distance. And, uh, and this distance of course varies as because of stochastic reasons. So you have, then you can have different uh, distances of course, but, and this depend on the sample size S. Um, so for example, for the sample size S equals to 10, uh, this distance can vary a lot, but for a higher sample rate of like 100, um, you actually get a very close distance already. Um, so these were like all taken from the, so these, these were all taken from the main tangle now. Uh, and here is like where, the situation would be with a parasite chain. So with like a very simple parasite chain, which would be the most efficient case, uh, you actually can very easily 
detect that it has a very large distance. Um, the attacker can hide this a little bit by um, in using some of the transactions within the parasite chain to uh, create a distribution that's more similar to the one in the man main tangle. But he loses a lot of efficiency of the parasite chain because he has to invest this proof of work to links within the parasite chain rather than like linking to the main tangle. Um, so you you can decrease actually the attack uh, by by quite a bit. Um, so what can you actually do once you have detected a parasite chain? So there are several approaches that we can take. Uh, one is, for example, described by Ferraro, King, and Shorten, where you restart uh, or you or you start the the random walk again from the from the from where you started initially, uh, but with your first step being a more heavy walk. Um, now this with this more heavy walk, you avoid going along something that is something that is like uh, a much lighter weight initially, which would be the parasite chain once it's revealed. Um, and so you, you avoid this. And with the second tip, you can simply um, avoid anything that disagrees with the first walk. So then you basically avoid going down this path. However, then you only use one of those two tips that you selected to actually um, secure the ledger in terms of like collecting all of the transactions, whereas the first one is just securing the ledger. It does not actually add many, it does not include many lightweight transactions in that case. Um, a different approach would be to revert several steps back to exit the parasite chain, or you can also uh, probabilistically like sometimes step backwards and forward. This would also like increase the chance to like exit this parasite chain. Um, we can also like add certain improvements, uh, for example, as I said already, like it's more difficult for a uh, for an attacker to include high numbers of approvers in the parasite chain. So you can reward having high numbers of approvers by changing your your measured uh, your your, dis uh, your distance metric um, to this Q here. Um, you can also perform a future cone detection, but however, this like requires like another walk. Um, algorithm that is fairly expensive so it's only worth like doing that occasionally and um, maybe once you have detected a child uh, uh, that there might be a parasite chain but you're not certain to do so um, so these are the measurements um, yeah and um, so yeah i've arrived now at the end of my talk um, thank you very much for listening